Picture the scene. You are an up and coming flat earther making large strides in the community, coming up with questions and proofs that you seem to think is making big waves. You've hit the jackpot with an idea that you think will make even the most staunch flat earth debunker sit up and take notice. Excitedly, you set up your camera and all of your equipment, knowing that this could be the moment that you can truly prove that the earth is flat. Nervous, you hit record. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Um, well, same day, same time. This is not to scale, of course. When I grew up, the solar system was stationary. All right, honey, come on. The sun was standing. Why don't you stop this bullshit? <sighs> I love Can you give me like five minutes? No, you've had the, all morning, and I'm just freezing, and I'm hungry, and I'm just trying to stop cleaning the house. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Yes, that was CC, Chris from New York there, being absolutely owned by his wife. And today we're going to take a look at some more of his ramblings. But before we do that, I just want to take a moment to thank the sponsors of this video today, Raycon. As we all know, the world is becoming more and more wireless dependent. And it's very important that you get yourself a good pair of wireless earbuds. But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out these wireless earbuds from Raycon. Raycon earbuds start about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands that you may know. And their latest model, the E25, is their best one yet. With six hours playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass and more compact design, gives you a nice noise isolating fit. And they're comfortable as well, perfect for on the go listening and taking phone calls. And I've even taken them running as well. I did a six mile run in them. They're actually really good. Nice snug fit. Can't hear anything else around me, which is uh, ideal really. Love them. And then I used them in the coffee shop afterwards. They are that versatile. This is the difference for me, as before I would have used two sets of headphones. Also, unlike some of your wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with none of those hanging stems or wires. To get 15% off your order, visit buyraycon.com slash simandan. That's buyraycon.com slash simandan for 15% off your Raycon wireless earbuds. Right, back to old CC from Westchester County, and you will not be surprised to know that he is in his car. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's January 10th, uh, 2020, and uh, it's a Friday. I like to give you some things to think about on a Friday. Ooh, lucky us. All right, um, just going to get right into it. I <laughs> was listening to the news the other day, and... I'll tell you, they're, they're really doing the agenda with, with space. I, I mean, even a local station was interviewing some amateur astronomist. And, yeah, it's astronomer, Chris. Uh, uh, some kid, in, I don't know, I guess it was high school or something like that. I, I, I couldn't even listen to the whole thing. You know, it was just so f***ing annoying. I, I, some telescope, and he was looking at a star, and they were talking about it, how he found a new star, or some bullshit like that, whatever it may be. But people do do that, Chris. It's not, as you say, bullshit. Um, anyway, so let me just get right into it. The uh, uh, climate change. You see, the media buries themselves when they talk about this shit. Because, I mean, that proves flat Earth all day long. Does it? And, and I'll tell you why. 
Because the only way you can have climate change, all right, with billions of these cars being driven on a daily basis, hourly, all the time, 24 hours a day. It's night here, it's daytime in China, okay? And I don't think China has any emissions controls. I don't think they really give a shit, okay? So- Actually, Chris, China has already met its Copenhagen emission targets for 2020, which includes reducing carbon intensity by 40 to 45%. We're probably the only country that actually cares about this stuff and nobody else is gonna follow us. Sorry, didn't President Trump withdraw from the Paris Agreement? Just saying. But back to my point. It can only happen on a contained unit. Okay, that's that's how climate control could happen. Okay, because if we were spinning at a thousand miles per hour, forget about traveling through uh, the, the universe and all that other bullshit. But, if we were revolving, and we were revolving at a thousand miles per hour, and there was a, a bleeding part of space right there, and air could escape, a little air could escape, the planet would clean itself. Okay, but don't you see that being in a, a, a container, having a having a globe over us, and being on flat land, not moving, is the only way climate control can happen. Chris, this is just nonsensical babbling now. The atmosphere is stuck to the earth because of gravity. The more CO2 that is in the atmosphere, the worse climate change will get. That's it. Bottom line, that's all. So keep pushing this climate control shit out there because it just proves more of flat earth. It's great, I love it. Keep doing it. Want everybody to talk about it. Wow, talk about desperation. The solar eclipse. This is a great one. I love this one. Well, when when it was uh, when the shadow of the moon was traversing across the U.S., the shadow was seventy miles large. Okay, that's what it looked like, and that was the total eclipse. By the way, okay, uh, the sun. I mean, the moon in front of the sun. Anyway, so why is it that we can't see a shadow of Earth on the moon? He said, well, it's too big. He's like, no, we've done the math. And apparently you should be able to see at some point a little black dot. Well, not dot. It would be quite large. Probably a dilated pupil almost. But you'd be able to see that go right across the moon. Yeah, it's called a lunar eclipse, Chris. Look. But you don't. No, no, I just showed you. Look, here. And I'll tell you why you don't. But you do. Because once again, we live on a flat, stationary land here, covered with a dome. What you're seeing up there are the same size and they're not as far away as you've been told. Certainly not 93 million miles away. Certainly not 238,000 miles away. It's such a perfect system they've come up with, isn't it? Yes, it's called reality. But yet they keep burying themselves all the time. People say, oh, well, the, the, the moon's, uh, the, the Earth's shadow does go over the moon. That's why it changes colors. That's beautiful. But the creator could create whatever he or she, whoever it may be, would like to do anything. It's a self-sustained unit. Don't you understand that? It's complete. It, does, it shares no characteristic with the sun at all whatsoever. It emits cold. Okay? It's emitting cold. No, it's not. Radiative cooling. Please look it up. I've done many, many videos on it in the past. <laughs> so the relationship between the sun and the moon is out the window. Okay, I mean, it's, it's just time and time again we, we, we tell people this. And it just phew, flies right over their head. That sounds familiar. Sails right over. And then they come up with all these computations and all this bullshit. But it's, it's, it's not fooling us. It's not fooling us. Flat Earth is very simple. It's a very simple concept. Well, I'm not gonna argue with that. Okay, it, it's, it's very easy to understand. All the scientists out there are marching along in their, in their white jackets and white coats and, and, and glasses and stethoscopes, doctors, saying all this shit, trying to come after us, but none of them have, and they never will. They can't. They can't get involved with this because they know they're wrong. 
So you say, and I'm not being funny, but you are just CC Chris from New York, Westchester County. And when any of them ever wake up, I hope they contact the big boys about this so we can finally put this to rest and get this nonsense out there and, and, and wake these f***ing sleepers up here and, and just get them to understand that there's a lot more to life and to understand what is around them and the lies that are there. The level of delusion here is unreal, isn't it? Who wants to see another one? Yes? Okay, cool. Here we go, here's Chris. He's in his car again, but this time he's not moving. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. Uh, it's January something 25th or 6th, 2020. Um, anyway, look, I I was supposed to have a week off. Sorry to hear that, matey. And I was going to just kind of revent my channel. And um, I wasn't able to do that. And that really pissed me off. <sighs> However, my boss would, uh, you know, said he would make it up to me. But while I have your attention... I don't understand one thing. One thing? Well, it's 5.10, I have very little time. Um, I, I, I just don't understand one thing, is that if you take your conventional magnet from your house, you know, and you heat it up on your frying pan, eh, get it to about, I don't know, what, 400 degrees? 400 degrees in a frying pan? Wow. Probably around then. All of a sudden it loses its magnetism. Yes, this is called the Curie temperature or Curie point. And this is the point at a certain temperature where some metals will lose their magnetic properties. You see now, that's funny because we were told that the Earth has a core of lava. That's just iron or whatever the hell it is, we have no idea because they tell you whatever they want you to believe and you believe it. Yes, the inner core is solid iron and nickel and the outer core is molten iron, nickel and other trace metals. So the thing is, my question is to the scientists out there is why is it that I can just heat up a magnet that has magnetism and can attract metal to it. But I can heat it up and then all of a sudden it loses that magnetism. But yet the core of our earth is molten lava. Molten metals, but we know what you mean. That's spinning around, apparently causing gravity. What? The level of misunderstanding here is quite simply astounding. Now I was expecting Chris here to say, why is there still a magnetic field if the core of the Earth is hotter than the Curie point or Curie temperature? Well, this is because the Curie point only affects the ferromagnetism of metals. The core of the Earth produces an electromagnetic field that is not affected by the Curie temperature or Curie point. However, Chris says this. That's spinning around, apparently causing gravity. Wow. Just so you're aware, Chris, it's the whole mass of the planet that causes the gravitational pull, not just the core. I really, really think, despite these examples, that Chris can be educated enough to at least start doubting Flat Earth. So this, right now, is an open invite to CC to have a chat with me online about his Flat Earth beliefs. I'll record the discussion, and if he is comfortable, then I will publish it at a later date. CC, over to you. Right, that brings this episode to a close today. Let's hope, let's really hope that CC takes my olive branch. Thank you very much for watching. One final reminder to visit buyraycon.com slash to get 15% off your Raycon wireless earbuds. 
Huge thanks to them for sponsoring the video today. Again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe. It'd be thoroughly appreciated. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday where we'll be taking a look at Jupiter. See you then.